uh, with Transocean. And eight months later, I quit. I came back to India. I had my own startup. Uh, I was acquainted to Pansa because of it. So I'm here to share my experience, how I failed, and I'm restarting, and all the tools that I discovered for marketing that are really necessary for every educator in order to make their mark. So the first lesson that I learned was I confused my startup with a company. I really said, I thought that a startup is like one tenth of a company, which was very wrong. I implemented principles that I, I failed miserably. The second was not adequately prepared. As Pun said in the last workshop, he quoted that most of the failure rate is because people are not prepared adequately. So I was one of them. So no laser like focus. That was another thing that I made a mistake. So the end in the bracket is for mistake. mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I did a lot of amateur yeah, blinders. <laughs> so I did a lot of blunders. Uh, I, uh, I remember there's one workshop and I actually encouraged kids to start coding and you know just uh, forgetting what the teacher taught and then coding and learning, you know, just learn how to code and then prepare yourself for that. Then your teacher will be useless by the time you learn and you know, which was <laughs> I was not welcome the second time in that school. So. <laughs> So the lesson that I learned was, I realized that passion without discipline was useless. Uh, if you have passion, you need to have discipline if you want to execute it. So this is the first change that I made. The second, boring and unscalable things matter the most. People usually think in startup, it's all party, it's all enjoyment, but it's not. The more boring things, the more unscalable things you do, the better you have chance of succeeding. So. Uh, Philip Kotler, uh, he defined marketing as marketing deals with identifying and meeting human and social needs. One of the shortest definitions of marketing is meeting needs profitable. So it doesn't matter if you are selling something or if you are helping your customer out in something. By till the time you meet their needs profitably, you are doing your marketing. So it helps you in the customer development. It helps you sell yourself before your product. So why 21st century? A lot of time, uh, people actually confuse their, you know, the principles that they learned in their business school with the time chain, you know, with the times and the trends that change with time. So I found a really, uh, really, you know, perfect picture for this. <laughs> so if people who are actually thinking that they can, you know, use a selfie stick and in 19th century, so this would have been. A lot of that people you're doing that, but that is not the need of art. You need to buy an actual selfie stick to what you can use it. It's a wrench, actually. <laughs> 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 and then that's a cell phone. It's like <laughs> so. Yeah. So this was the uh, map designed by Ross Roman and Mark Graham from Oxford University. The data is two years old, but you can see a lot of red spots which indicate that 80 to 100 percent of the population is online. So this is the major uh, signal for you know every educator to go online and start marketing themselves there, rather than getting their you know profit forwards and getting collaboration with students and everything. Uh, although why India is less than 20 percent. Yeah, zero. What is the white indicator? India seems to be No, I'm the Average users are more than the number of the population of Ethiopia or something. But uh, 0 to 20 percent. 0 to 20 percent. 0 to 20 percent penetration. 0 to 20 percent penetration of? India. Internet. Internet. Of people in India? Yeah. Okay. Keep it uh, okay. Also, it's 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 Indian by a Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was right. What's common in Mark Ground? It has nothing to do with political boundaries. Yeah. It's the penetration that they are doing. Canada is this line, if you can see. Ah, okay. It is actually because of the internet penetration they have designed this. Canada Canada. This is this. That's the mountain that we were saying. So this is that was Donald Trump's input. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. 
Okay, so this is a, a source called Black, uh, Black Rock. They are basically the sources for Business Insider and Huffington Post. So if you look closely, from after 1990, all the internet, digital camera, MP3 player, HTTP, social media, they are literally vertical lines. So the adoption rate is actually a vertical line, which indicates that all these things are immediately acceptable to all the population. So why this is the another uh, you know uh, signal that why we have to adopt all these things in order to market ourselves. So this is the messaging uh, that is growing. Uh, so we have WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, WeChat, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. The incredible thing about uh, as you can see, the WhatsApp data, it was launched in 2013. By the time it was in 2015, it has grown to approximately a billion people in two years. Consistently, if you see, the, it, the Instagram is the one consistent that is growing every year. So my core focus is will be on Instagram. So, okay. So this was the data released by Instagram. It shows it shows all the uh, the video content, mobile duration, messaging. So Instagram is acquainted with all the tools that you need to market yourself. You don't have to go to some website for messaging. You don't have to go for uh, to some website for video content, to some for pictorial or anything. It's all there in one place. So this is what an average uh, uh, Instagram profile looks like. You have your posts, your followers, then you have your description, you have a link to your website, you then have your posts, and these are the various tabs. This shows your home. This is a really incredible thing, the search button. It actually, the algorithm, what it does is it uses keywords in order to position all the pictures. So this is the real key where you can actually market yourself. You can get people who are like-minded, just like you. So, this is another uh, profile called uh, Gary V, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. The reason I displayed it because of the theme that he uses. The first thing is the theme that you have to use in order to create your own profile. If you can see that in every single picture, you'll have you'll have Gary in the background and his quote on the front. So, how to gain target audience? Since uh, I conducted a little experiment with this thing, on how can I actually gain, you know, like-minded target audience uh, on Instagram? So this was an image that I uploaded on 6th of May. It says millionaire, and so it's related to money. So I thought maybe why don't I just focus on <laughs> people who are money motivated, money-minded? So that was my target audience. So if you can see that I have like uh, two, five five likes, uh, the Caption was really uh, outdated. Who is with me? Hashtags were, you know, they were not proper. There is a contradiction here. How can an engineer be mighty also? It's like number underscore mighty. Number underscore mighty is my profile. Yeah. What I upload. <laughs> <laughs> number underscore mighty is my profile. In fact, I would say that somebody with no money is the most powerful person in the world. <laughs> because what can you? What is he afraid of? Nothing to lose. No power can scare him. So good. It's a matter of that. <laughs> so millionaire, uh, this, this one post that I uploaded. So the hashtags were, if you can see, it's it's of no relevance. It's hello and not the end. Start temporary status. So this is the image I uploaded uh, like uh, four days back. This is a screenshot that I took. I got 13 likes, literally double that on my previous posts. My caption says from my journey from N to M. That from a millionaire to a millionaire. If you see the hashtags, it's proper hashtags like motivation, money, millionaire, excited, difference, hustle, etc., etc. With the result, if you see that I got one millionaire lifestyle, something, some account following me. Although I'm not a you know, money advisor or anything, but I got this account as a like-minded account. Who is my follower? How proof? Because they are all things. So. <laughs> so a billionaire advice. The, the second account was a billionaire advice who started following me. And with network effects, uh, this RJ Swati from Red FM, she also uh, got into the conversation. So I'm just demonstrating the use of proper hashtags, the use of proper keywords. 
that can get you into that uh, you know wide link of images and from which people can find you so this is just a simple trick and because of one post i got like four followers so if I, you know, continue this on a regular basis, so I'll be getting gaining more followers, like like-minded people. If I started uploading money-related uh, images, can you just explain the concept of hashtag uh, in a bit more detail? Okay, so uh, I'm not a developer or a software guy by core, but I, I recently, I, when I was learning all these things, I realized that Google uses backlinks to rate the pages, you know, how many uh, uh, visitors there are for a particular and it ranges them. And I believe that all these uh, social media and even in Twitter, uh, Instagram, even in uh, Pinterest, we use uh, hashtags and hashtags are the keywords. I think you can correct me on this. Arvind. So <laughs> the hashtags are your keywords and because of those keywords, you can get uh, to a particular community. For example, if I, I used to, uh, money millionaire motivation and then i got for i got millionaire advice and millionaire advice and whatever these accounts start following me so this is one way that i found that i can gain followers because of it so now that we have gained four followers uh, from the last post so how do i keep these followers so the first thing is know your audience if you are a, if you are an educator, you should know what kind of uh, followers you have so that you can get those materials. Just say you know the students will start talking about you or the things that uh, will get you their attention. Second is the theme. As I saw means as I showed you for the Gary Vaynerchuk, he has all these photos in the background and the quote at the front. So the theme matters. You have you should have consistency. You know how many posts you do in one day. It's not like you can do like 50 posts and uh, <laughs> people will uh, come to you or something. But you should have a consistent stream in your uh, publishings. Uh, on an average, there was a survey that six to eight posts for a particular uh, profile uh, should be educated enough to get you uh, decent attention. Then the authenticity of the information that you are sharing. That's uh, another important thing. Then this key thing is the interaction that you have with your followers, you know, the presence that you show to them and the level of engagement uh, you can just build for so that your followers are talking about you. They have some content to talk about. So yeah, interaction, you give them something to talk about. So the theme, uh, this is Simon Sinek's uh, official page. So he follows a particular theme. He will have a decent uh, colored background. He will have his quote and he will post that. So this is the theme that he follows. Then know the audience and topic to engage. There is one magazine called Founder Magazine. It's an online magazine only for uh, business and startups people. So what they use is they used uh, Richard Branson's uh, interview to market themselves. And you, you can see that they got like 3,300 views. And uh, he also told that learn one of the most successful learn from one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world how to turn your ideas into realities and stuff. So people those who are interested in learning that will automatically follow them, and it's a word, word to mouth to mouth uh, publicity also. So how accounts market? You know, if you are we are yeah okay. So we are in individual accounts. You know, so we don't have much followings. We don't we are not interested. To get into more details, but how do these guys do? So there is an account called Millionaire Mentor. Uh, it's a verified profile. So what these guys do that they tell them what what they are. Then start your passive income digital business now. They'll give you the link. Visit that link, buy that stuff, or learn that stuff, and uh, refer it to somebody else or something. Some uh, somebody might be there. Second is like this: you get. Uh, some big shot to your interview and you publish that interview and you let your followers uh, to view this they are given this uh, uh, learn how one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world turns his idea into reality in this free issue so they have given a free issue of an interview by uh, richard branson so there's one way how you can do it this is one of the most uh, this this guy said that i was talking to you last time so uh, one morning i just wake up i saw this image and it's like really cool motivating picture you know you have your group print your map and everything and it says before 5 a.m so i thought maybe you know it's something to motivate you and when you say that you have to get up and do it before 5 a.m will be more successful 
but accidentally when I clicked, <laughs> this was uh, the actual account that they were marketing. So the 5 a.m. once you go to that link, 5 a.m., you will get all these things. Success start before 5 a.m. Blueprint for success go to before 5 a.m. dot com. You know, this is another way of marketing. Because when a lot of people will view this thing, they will definitely click and they'll definitely know this thing. So this is another way of marketing in, on Instagram. Then they, they, another uh, really amazing thing that uh, Kevin Rai does, he's a, a business growth expert, he's an investor, Australian. What he did was, he's wearing, uh, this is Ken, uh, Tobin Ray, he's wearing a, his uh, Snapchat uh, at the right, at the back. He uploaded that photo on Instagram. So when you are watching him, I mean, seeing his photo on Instagram, you know that he's on Snapchat. And this is his username, Kevin Ray. And he is marketing this. And this is his theme. He basically he has himself as the background and he'll have one uh, quote. And talking about hashtags, <laughs> this is what he, uh, he basically uses. So he'll have all of these, you know, social and quote and this and that and this and that. So this is another way of marketing yourself. And this is an individual account, not a community-based uh, account that we've seen before. So most hashtags would be taken up, right? How do you No, basically the hashtag thing is whenever you are entering a hashtag, you will see two types of options. First, first will be your recent ones that you've done, and second will have a particular number. So that means that these many photographs have been submitted to these hashtags. Those are the keys. The recent one that you use is like, you know, just setting up a conversation. If you have, if you have a number beside it, so you know that is an authenticate that people are actually submitting it. So you have a better chance of getting known. Which one? This? Yes. This one, which one is more credible? Which one is more worthy? Is See. Uh, uh, is it the 2345 posts which matter, or is it the 4,000 followers which matter, or is the 184 following? I tell you, a millionaire mentor is a profile that is recognized, that is the official page of millionaire mentor. It's a community, and it's official by Instagram. So whatever you market it on their page, you will get followers to you know the one who is in the team. So what these guys do is they, you know, if you have an account you know, some uh, something to do with 3D printing, let's say. So you can collaborate with the 3D company and you can say that, why don't you guys just uh, drive the traffic to my account? So then they can tag you in some images, they can aggregate you in some images, they can take your interview and they can find a lot of ways. So this is how all these things work. And one, the more uh, followers you have, the better it is. You know. Yeah, so you were actually explaining uh, two different types of hashtags, we didn't get that one completely. Okay, yeah. So, uh, the, the one is one that, uh, it, will, uh, it will be written as a recent hashtag. Okay, so that is not important. The other one in which there will be a number, like 2 million or whatever, XYZ. So whatever the number, that hashtag actually tells you that how many photographs have been submitted. So people are actually using it on a daily basis. For example, uh, there is a company called JJ Clothings. So they have a hashtag called JJ, hashtag JJ. So if you have a clothing, uh, something to do with clothes, so hashtagging your JJ will get you more attention than, you know, just saying my clothes or whatever. So this is how it works. You know, when, once you see that number, you know that these many photographs have been submitted and that will get your attention, not the recent ones, because nobody notices that. Okay, but if you use uh, some other brand's uh, uh, hashtag, is, isn't it misleading? Because no. also, See, JJ may have something to do with clothes, but your clothes are not JJ, right? JJ cannot stop you from doing this. No, they can no. stop. No, I'm not saying they can stop. But isn't it misleading because the person who uh, used that JJ keyword is someone who's looking for clothes of that particular brand, right? Even though you may be wanting to market your clothes, but you are you have a different brand or a different uh, USP. So, uh, won't I get confused? Uh, I would say you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot stop China from <laughs> From selling things in India, you know, it's just uh, you can just JJ is a, a board, you know, it's a famous hashtag that can get you more followers. Yeah, if if people don't like your thing, they will simply not come. Okay, if they, if they like you more than JJ, they'll simply come. It's like so those people understand that it's just a way of finding 
things related to JJ. Yes, it's like uh, when you are on Twitter, you don't see, uh, you know, you can use uh, hashtag Nike, hashtag Entitas UK, you know, you can hashtag them. There is but, no way to have a copyright with the hashtag. I mean, it's no, not at all. No. It's like a steering wheel. Mm -hmm. You cannot claim that you invented it. And you said you can you can sort of verify it on something you said. That's because it's the official account for Mr. Kamikaze. Yeah, you have to get uh, you have to fill the process and you have to get verified first. That's all. Otherwise, obviously there's no other way to really verify verify any account. No, 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 no. You cannot verify on your account. So yeah, so another growing community is Pinterest. I started using it last time when somebody mentioned it. Okay. So, yeah, it's 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 just a digital uh, board in which you can pin uh, pin your uh, you know topics. So Pinterest is basically the visual bookmarking tool that helps you discover and save creative ideas. So once you uh, find something interesting, you don't you can't you, in Pinterest you don't have to save it for something. You just have to pin it to your own uh, profile. Yeah, again, there are no no. no. Yeah. Every profile will have a source. For example, if you are marketing your own content, you will have the link to your website. For example, if I like learning Pythagoras theorem your way, so I can simply, you know, this is what an average pin looks like, if you can see. So if I like learning, I can simply go back to your website and I can browse other contents. There is no such thing as Pinterest will own it or somebody else will own it. The source, the owner, can post and and he can permit other people to post from his behalf. This is another great thing that Pinterest has done. So if I like learning Pythagoras theorem your way, I can simply pin it to my profile and let other people know that uh, there is another way which will lead you to uh, lead those people to your account. So this is how it works. This is an average what the post look like. It will have a really amazing photograph, a little bit description and the source. If you like it, you can pin it on your profile or you can share it on other page, uh, other pages. So they define their post as an idea, a gift, recipe or even a quote. They always point back to the site they came from, like yours. If you add the save button to your site, if you can add the pin it button to your site, people can use it to add content to printers. So they can actually pin it to their profile, but their followers, it will just direct them to your profile. This is how it works. So uh, apart from connecting uh, people using hashtags and uh, keywords, Pinterest basically uses uh, people's interest. One question. Yeah. I've been using Pinterest for about three years now. Okay. Now, um, I'm not creative my own content. I'm only Pinterested. The other people's content. So, how do I benefit from it? Ma'am, uh, you can benefit as a facilitator. You know, uh, promoting only great content that is useful for everybody, not you know any content. You can you can become a profile that that is you know that curates that authenticates stuff. Means collects the collects the authenticate the useful thing. Means I don't know your uh, expertise. French. 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 So. Only the content that is highly, you know, highly authentic or highly useful, highly uh, sophisticated or other thing, you can be a facilitator of those content. Since you don't own it, you'll you just have to mention the source. The source counts, so you will be driving followers to their websites. So you can be a facilitator. So actually, my name doesn't come anywhere. Oh, okay. As a no, you you have to introduce yourself as a facilitator. Your your name. Uh, it's just like that that when you are sharing this uh, to your stuff, so all the followers that you have, you can direct them to the source. You can be a facilitator, and once you start creating your own content, you can say that this is the content that I created, and you can mention your website or any outlet that you have, and you can drive those followers to them. So it's it works like that. So Pinterest, instead of connecting uh, through keywords and other things, they simply they will show you a few photographs and they will tell you to you know like all those photographs that you find interesting, and they will populate uh, a lot of different uh, similar contents to your profile for your viewing. So what they do is Pinterest connects people through shared interests, their passions, 
hobbies, tastes, and values. You can inspire them by, uh, by using Pinterest in a personal, authentic way. So they connect by interest, not with your keywords or uh, any other thing. So how Pinterest can help me spread my cookies? So first thing first is to add a Pinterest button to your website so that people who likes their who likes the content can pin it to their profile so that you can get inorganic growth. You know the people whom you don't know but people who are actually viewing those things. You can get it from pinterest.com slash about slash goodies slash menu. Second is keep your profile community based. Don't go buy this from me or uh, sell directly. Pinterest is all about generating interest in your community. How you can talk, how you can create topics and other things. Second is to focus on growth. Focus on your followers, what are they liking? Because Pinterest is all about interest. So since ma'am has a, 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 I, I would say French learning community. So in order to get more acquainted, in order to gain more followers, if you can follow on their profiles, on their pins, what are they liking, what is the type and how much deviation, what if somebody is liking any other language or new professor has come up who is teaching in a different way. So this thing will help you curate the content, hence it will help you to gain more uh, authentic followers. On a daily basis, grow your Pinterest pins and boards. On a daily basis, it's not like today you are uh, have a free time and you sit down and you're like creating boards, adding pins, and for two weeks you are quiet, and then again you have some time. It has to be a gradual growth. You have because people who are on Pinterest they visit Pinterest on a regular basis because of their interest, because of everything. The question is what types of pin boards will enhance your brand image? Now pin boards are basically, uh, it's a subset. For example, uh, getting back to our exam, example for teaching French, if you can create boards or you know, uh, dissecting French into how you can learn and uh, what are the syllables, etc etc decide the name of those boards just say your brand image will get improved this is the most key part because a lot of time people they are not uh, creative enough to name anything you know they they're just like just like classroom they're naming it on the like this is pythagoras they are on this is this this is calculus thing. so you have to think of some ways by which you can name it creatively that will help you build a brand then there is another interesting thing that uh, while you are creating a board, board is basically a board in which you collect pins of that interest. You can actually select me plus contributor option. In that, for example, if she has uh, uh, she has a board called language, and she has an expertise in French, maybe she can have a me plus contributor. And if I am the contributor and I have interest in German. Maybe I could add more pins to her board on the German language. So it just helps her board to get more content and a diversified content, not just French. So this is then another uh, key point of me plus contributor. Then keywords and hashtags, they always work for uh, any social media. The interesting thing is to mention the link, you know, link that will lead, lead people back to your website because Ultimately, Pinterest is just driving uh, followers from Pinterest to your source. Interact with others means it's quite dumb, but it is important to mention that you have to show your presence. You just can't uh, ignore your followers. If they are commenting on something, then you have to, you know, if it is a legit thing, then you have to take care of that. Because as I told you, marketing is meeting needs profitably. So if you're selling yourself profitably, uh, interaction is the most important part of it. Then, if you have a choice, then I would suggest that you post relevant quality photographs. A lot, a lot of time in India, what happens is when people talk about uh, different topics and different uh, things, they usually don't care about the photograph, the color, the uh, you know the image or the message that photograph will send to the user. But if you can use the quality ones, the ones who attracts followers, it will get you more. Uh, gain, you will gain more followers in the longer run. 
So yeah, so that's Pinterest. Now next is the how to create uh, infographics. No, no, I, 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 no. This was in context with. Uh, I'm telling you, this was in context with educators because. When you are, uh, you know, sharing a content from a source, let's like say you find something incredible on mathematics from some website, and if you are posting, so automatically that photograph will come, will appear on those on that post. But if you are having your own website, if you are promoting your own content, so you can visit any means. You can uh, Shutterstock is something, Image Bazaar is one thing. You can actually visit those, uh, you know, marketplaces, and you can get relevant photographs for a relevant topic, which would appeal to those followers for example if your followers are aged like 14 to 18 or something students so there is one particular section of images that will uh, appeal to them and posting those photographs with your content will help you gain more so yeah for infographics so what is an infograph so infographs is basically a sequential relatable graphical data which you can simplify as much as you can you should simplify it so we have a descriptive one uh, it talks about e learning yeah it talks about e learning and this can this is one of one of the types you can have a simple one like do things that don't scale and you have like nine options one image one description easy to learn or it can give you a heartache. <laughs> How to get creative and he has popped in all stuff. So yeah, these are the few types of infographs that people usually um, uh, generate. Although uh, this is the kind that you know people can learn and build on their own, and the descriptive one and this it obviously needs expertise. <laughs> so yeah, so how do I design this thing? Yeah. Looking at software. Sites where I can, like, I can yeah, I'm coming. Like, I'm, I'm coming to it. So, the first thing is to gather data. You know, gather as much data as you can with. Uh, second is to read everything about the topic. Because what happens is once you uh, start designing the, the infograph, and if you don't read everything about it, at some point. You will just have to do it because you have to relate everything. And once, if you don't know anything about some part, it will cost you more time. Then find your story. Infographics is all about a story. You know, do the reality check. Do people actually like it? You know, if you have it on paper, so do the reality check. Create a hierarchy. Define a hero, and then define that story. Then design a wireframe. Design a visual theme, how you are going to define your infograph, and then publish. So, then what is wireframe? So, wireframe is designing the outline of your infographs. For example, uh, just like this, you know, you can have you can have it on a paper that I'll have one photograph and one line description, or I can have uh, like this general layer yeah. so canva is the source that uh, uh, it's just like operating a computer you don't need how to you don't need to learn coding but you can operate a computer canva you have everything preset you will have uh, uh, wireframes, you just need to gather your data, you just need to publish your, uh, you know, design a story and just put it on. So Canva is a free source and a quality one. So yeah. So come, talking about Snapchat, uh, Snapchat is not very famous in the developing countries. Snapchat is Really famous for developed countries. As it has not been famous due to Samsung. Pardon? Samsung has made it very famous. Yeah, some ripples might have occurred, but uh, as I was. Uh,
have Snapchat and Instagram. Do you want to <laughs> so I was uh, I was just visiting the Snapchat uh, website for uh, the data because they these guys they publish data and they themselves say that we focus on developed countries rather than developing countries. Uh, one of the co-founders in Forbes he has an article. Uh, so they say that more than sixty percent of US aged between thirteen to thirty four is on Snapchat. And this is a particular post. Uh, you click a photograph, then you can uh, have a caption. So this photograph it has a mobile phone inside a glass turning, and it says, "My daughter is currently posing D minus in mathematics," and this is a mobile phone. So uh, talking about Snapchat, it's it's an incredible incredible tool for uh, marketing as well because. You just, if you post a video, you don't, uh, it's a seven second video just like Vine or uh, Instagram. You can create a story. Now, a lot of businesses are actually investing uh, in creating ads and creating, gaining more followers on Snapchat and they are actually earning from it. So you can publish your stories, you can uh, talk to your uh, friends in real time and there is a video uh, I would share on the Facebook WhatsApp group uh, on uh, Snapchat that how you can make money. It's a very uh, good video over like 10 minutes or so. So. Just like Twitter, is there any other, any of these uh, other forms of social media where you have a uh, uh, character specific display that you can't use? More than like, 140 characters? Yeah. No. Nothing like that anywhere else. On and, and for the videos, you say 7 seconds. That's, that's videos, the they prefer 7, uh, less than 10 seconds because you know, that's when the game happens. So on Snapchat, basically I was not that uh, uh, motivated to share a lot because Snapchat basically has first the ground reach, means educators from education point of view, I haven't figured it out. So there was no point of talking a lot on that thing. So yeah. So, matlab ki baat, that's like no beef. There is no monkey path in this, you know. It's not the... <laughs> so, do, do not confuse uh, social media to marketplace. Uh, that's the worst uh, uh, problem that that is occurring. So, market your customers' behavior and their belief, not your product. Market what they feel about their about your product, not what you have. Because that drives uh, more people into your network. And second is uh, help as many followers as you can uh, because that will encourage more interactions and thus getting you more uh, people. So, yeah, so success never comes in one day. So. <laughs> Thank you. Raman, is there a comparison of all these social media platforms by demographics? Like you showed for uh, Snapchat. I found uh, for the messaging, I found a few. So that would be really helpful to know. Uh, we should not be on the platform where our customers don't get to The first time you showed was the data. So that was how they have been adopted, the rate of adoption. No, I, say, I had this message. Yeah, Okay. Uh, I would try. Smokers, non-smokers. <laughs> <laughs> that, that kind of data would really be used. Okay. I would. Uh, I'll search and I'll just post it on Facebook or WhatsApp. Yeah. Put the slide first. No, which one? So rate of adoption is very fast as compared to electricity or telephone or anything.
Instagram. So you talked about the